Okay, um, hello, my name is Sandra, and my topic is the origins of white color versus blue color. How do they dress um, in that period of, period of time, right? Uh, first, I can say that I look at the pictures, and you will see two men. Uh, one dress on my left is one man dress as a demon overall. It looks like uh, if he works more uh, on hands, you know, muscle type, uh, more like a country type. On my right side, uh, we see a man with an attire, a hat, and a tie, like if he's working in a banker, in a bank, I'm sorry, as a banker, or office man, or someone who works in a building. Uh, this is considered a white collar uh, worker. I'm going to read what it says here. The color divide of occupations emerged in the 1930s, following more than a century of changes in the nature of work and clothing by Dr. Lou Martin. So if you notice here in the picture, uh, we can see uh, one woman and different men like a blue color uh, workers, right? Uh, waiting uh, for some instructions of what to do. And if you see the background, it's more like a country type as well. So uh, this is an example of some uh, uh, colors that they, um, the white, um, I think, color people uh, used to dress. This is Montgomery War and Coast Fall and Winter Catalog. Uh, let's see. I'm going to read what it says in, in the 1951. The famed sociologist uh, Greg Mills published White Color, The American Middle Classes. So that means like um, uh, White Color was considered middle, middle class. Uh, however, uh, the people who work uh, in a country type, like these people, are considered more like a lower, lower class, right? Paid, uh, the paid is less than the white color employees. And I can, I would like to show you another um, page that I found. For example, this one. Uh, it uh, it gives you a description of uh, a blue color and white color workers. It says that white color jobs are jobs where workers do intellectual rather than manual labor. So intellectual uses more like uh, you know thinking more like analyzing, like uh, you know like doctors, nurses working in the hospitals, uh, even receptionists. Uh, but the manual labor is more like a construction workers, plumbers, electricians. And um, I wanted to show you the picture of, uh, of this picture. It says that the Great Depression show in the daily attire of the average man in the early half of the 1930s. Even though this picture is about the Great Depression, you can see uh, that they are very well dressed. And um, this is how they used to look for, for someone who works, you know, in a, in a big company. <laughs> Let's say um, this picture is Clark Gable a renewed actor who won the Academy Award for Best Actor in 1934. And um, this is called What Men Really Were in the 1930s. So it shows you uh, what the men were uh, in that time. So I wanted to show you the video. Welcome back to the Netherlands Gazette. And in today's video, we'll be turning back the clock once more to the golden age of menswear, the stylish 1930s. And we'll analyze what men actually wore back then. To many classic style enthusiasts, the 
1930s are the epitome of style. As such, the really featured on the Gentleman's Gazette, and many consider it to be the golden age of menswear. Personally, I love looking through vintage fashion illustrations, particularly from the era, because the white lapels of the suit and the full cut. You can see the magazine, right? How it looks. Unsurprisingly, we call it Gentlemen of the Golden Age. You can find All right, so this is this is it for me.